Hello and welcome to Extreme Gameplays where I play games stylishly. Today's big project time! That's right! In today's video, I'm gonna decide for myself and for a lot of y'all because I don't respect your opinions which God of War game has the best magic attacks in the franchise. And make sure to stick around to the end where I have a top 4 God of War games based on their magic attacks and a top 5 magic attack list. A really short one. Now real quick, before proceeding anywhere, this video is only gonna be about the mainline Santa Monica games, and it will not include the handheld games God of War Ghost of Sparta and God of War Chains of Olympus. It's gonna be God of War 1, God of War 2, God of War 3, and God of War Ascension. I'm gonna be going through each game's magic attacks except for the extra bonus credit ones like Poseidon's Rage at the start of God of War 2 and Divine Reckoning in God of War 3. These are extra magic attacks and aren't the main ones that Kratos goes with throughout his journey. Magic attacks are these cool resources that you can dump in either smart or insane ways in these God of War games. Today we're diving into the depths of these games magic attacks and we'll see how they fare against each other starting from God of War 1 all the way to God of War Ascension. Ascension's horrible magic attacks. It's gonna be mainly centered around how good and effective the magic attack is. With that being said, grab a single popcorn and enjoy the video. You can't eat the popcorn though. So starting with God of War 1, we already have some of the best magic attacks in the series. Poseidon's Rage for huge AoE damage, Medusa's Gaze for strategic and smart use to take out enemies quick, Zeus' Fury for projectile attacks, and finally the Army of Hades for pure carnage. Let's cover the first one we get, and it is Poseidon's Rage. This magic attack is unaffected with difficulty, as is the same case with all the magic attacks in God of War 1. Real quick, let's list the magic attacks that are affected with difficulty, meaning they get nerfed with hard difficulties. We have Atlas Quake from God of War 2 and Nemean Roar from God of War 3. That's it. All the other magic attacks in today's video are not affected with difficulty. They deal the same damage on very hard and they do not get nerfed. Back to Poseidon's Rage. It naturally shreks enemies as it is a spell of destruction. <laughs> At level 1, it does not bring all the smoke as the area of effect is not that big and the damage is not the craziest but still solid overall. At level 2 and beyond is where it becomes the ultimate enemy wiper. You can mash circle while it's happening and the more you press the button, the more damage and the more area of effect, especially at level 3. Every tap of the button circle adds a teeny bit more damage to the enemies. At level 3 is where we see this spell shine and destroy enemies and everything around us. Being able to cast the spell in the air is of course a huge plus, but that's not where it stops. It damages everything above and below it. At level 3, the area is bigger, it takes more time and destroys more and deals more and more damage, naturally. Not a lot of enemies even stand a chance against a maxed out Poseidon's Rage. The cost of the spell is also nothing to laugh about. While at level 1 you could cast a lot more of it, at level 2 and beyond it naturally starts taking a lot more magic per spell, but honestly, well worth it for destroying enemies and doing it with a fashion Thor can only dream of. Just make sure to keep on mashing circle and don't stop at any point thinking the damage output is over. With every button press, you add more damage inflicting on the enemies, trust. Now that's already a very fast start for the magic olympics that we have today, but <laughs> it did not end with Poseidon's Rage. Next magic attack, we acquire Medusa's head to petrify enemies in what is the best mechanic in all of God of War. Medusa's gaze is a focused beam that petrifies enemies slowly. Magic is spent the more you hold the button, so make sure to make the best use out of the best tool in the game. Even at level 1, Medusa's Gaze is supreme in my opinion. It has a very nice strategic touch to it and you gotta know your timing when using it. Use it from afar or mid-range and never from close range to get the best outcome in petrification. Use it smartly and you get yourself an easy kill and a ton of orbs. Use it on big enemies but know your positioning since you can't move while beaming. We'll get to that later in the next game. Medusa's Gaze is the best magic attack in God of War 1. 
but the shenanigans only start with the level 1 of this spell. At level 2, you unlock Medusa's Flash for a flash that is faster than the beam, but it takes a specific amount of your magic gauge. This one is a faster access to petrifying an enemy, but it has its time to be used. Mainly while trying to beam a big enemy is the best time to use this. And only God of a 1 allows you to flash while beaming, pressing triangle while you're holding square. Or you can try it out whenever you want, just on enemies that you're sure you can get. I mainly use it while trying to petrify a major grunt in the game so you do you. You can also do it in the air with the press of L2 but that's not it. While you do unlock a very nice flash that petrifies some foes on contact, the beam did not get ignored like that. Your beam is now stronger and petrifies faster. As if it wasn't already the best tool at level 1, it got a neat upgrade but again, with this amazing tool, it's not it. At level 3, you get an even stronger beam and at this point, you're petrifying everybody left and right. You also unlock an extra move that I will never recommend, but it's still there and is the 360 petrification. The Gorgon Rage. This cast takes away all your magic and petrifies your surroundings completely. Now again, I do not recommend this since it's not the best use of your resource really. It has no business taking away all our magic gauge just like a certain guy asking for his rent. Give me rent. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door. But still, an even better beam and flash. That's all I have to say. I guess the only way you could use the Gorgon Rage is by activating Rage right before dropping it down where everyone gets petrified. That's that way you have you keep your magic and you have infinite magic while in rage mode and your blades are maxed out. So just a recommendation. Medicine's Gaze is the best tool in God of War 1 and there is no competition for me. From the start at level 1 all the way to the max, consistently the best. A very strategic tool that got expanded in the next game and we will surely get to it soon enough. The next magic attack we get fumbles the bag heavy and what we got was Zeus's very weak fury. Zeus fury is a projectile magic attack. Kratos is stationary and shoots lightning bolts which I consider to be very cool but that's where the line ends, it's just very cool. Zeus's fury is weak and does not deal the damage a lightning bolt of Zeus is supposed to deal. You can also try it in the air but that's it. Taking it to level 2 is where it gets a little better and faster with a charge shot that deals a small area damage but the main use for it is not really the damage, it's the knockback. At level 3, you see it get a stronger charge shot with more damage and a much better stronger knockback and it's good area damage but again, main use is still for knockbacks. Not collision knockbacks, rather knockbacks that send the enemies flying to the outside most of the time. Really good for ring outs. There isn't much I can talk about for Zeus Fury other than it being a Vegeta key blast attack and a charge shot that deals a nice knockback and somewhat good damage. It is the weakest magic attack in the game. After a long break from getting magic attacks, we get the army of Hades and this is where God of War 1 reminds us how good the magic attacks are in this game. What this spell does is that it sends souls lurking around and damaging surrounding enemies. It does not only deal the sweet great damage that it deals, but it also keeps on bouncing the enemies around for an easy air grab setup. They keep bouncing up and down making even the level 1 of the spell feel phenomenal. Again, I'm not even mentioning the awesome damage and range. At level 1, the range in which this army goes to is not that far. In later levels is where the range gets extended and these motherfuckers seek every enemy around the place. They don't let go of an enemy until it's vaporized and it's all great because of that. The cost however is a lot for this spell but rightfully so. The moment you cast the spell it feels like you just dropped a nuke in the battlefield. A constant moving nuke that has many pieces hunting down the enemies. The cost is perfectly justified and I wouldn't have it any other way. The spells in God of War 1 are all phenomenal, even the weakest can be used in strategic ways and in fun ways. They are all unaffected with difficulty and deal the same awesome damage regardless of difficulty. The cost for all of them is very nice and justified other than the 360 Gorgon Rage that takes away all your magic. That one is a bummer and it got fixed in the next game. Speaking of the next game, this makes for a very nice tran Zishin to God of War 2 and we're starting this off by not counting Poseidon's Rage in this game. It's only a starting magic attack or a bonus play magic attack, we're mainly talking about magic attacks that stick with Kratos throughout the game. Starting with the first one and it being Typhon's f***ing 
Spain. Typhon Spain took what Zeus Fury did and made it have variety in its attacks, let alone just being a projectile attack. Not only is it a projectile weapon that has a whole boss fight built around it, but it has differences in its attacks as well. While Zeus Fury did try to have different effects with its charge shots knockback, it still doesn't even come close to what the bow in God of War 2 can do. Other than being able to move while having the bow in hand, the bow has a lot more stuff going on for it when you take it to level 2. You unlock the lethal vortex. This is a traveling wind ball that trips enemies and sends them flying. A very nice setup and a very good statue shattering move shatters every single statue in the game and definitely shatters my heart. That's still nothing. The main killer gets unlocked when you max out Typhon's Bane. This tornado wrecks the surroundings. It does take quite a lot from your magic gauge but it's well worth it since the damage and the area of effect is just a huge win in your favor. Typhon Spain is 3 magic attacks in 1. It is insane with the damage output and how much the shooting gets faster the more you upgrade it. You do also unlock a charge shot at level 3 but it's nothing to talk a lot about. It can be good but I personally never use it. Typhon Spain takes the idea of Zeus Fury and just stretches it to the fullest. You're able to freely move and shoot, have more than one variation of attacks, and deal legit damage with every shot. The next magic attack we got is a special in the book. Chronos Rage is what we get next and this magic attack is awesome. Admittedly, at level 1 the range and damage is not all that insane, it's mainly good for interrupting enemies and stopping them right where they are before they do an attack. Also, the idea of Chronos Rage and the Nemesis Rage, we'll get to it with God of War 3, is not to just cast the spell and watch the magic happen, pun intended. The catch is you're totally free after casting it, it's basically the army of Hades but downgraded by a lot. But still, whenever you max them out, they're insane. So if you ever see the damage output purely of Chronos Rage sucking when compared to Typhon's main, just know that you have full control of your arsenal whenever the Chronos Rage is happening. Same thing with the Nemesis Rage that will get you with God of War 3. The spell does get better when you upgrade it to level 2 where the damage and range is better, but mainly the final upgrade is where it's at. With the level 3 upgrade, Chronos Rage range, say that 3 times, the range and the damage is at an all time high by this point and it also unlocks a huge explosion that happens at the end of the spell. That's all I can say about Chronos Rage, not a lot more that I can talk about but just know that it's good for damaging and stopping enemies from trying out stuff. It does have another use and it's building up the hit counter and you know what to do with that baby. Activate that rage mode and press L1 and watch everybody die around you with this huge volcanic destruction. I don't know what this is. A very good magic attack, but nothing, not in any God of War can compare to what we got next after Chronos Rage. Uriley's head is the best magic attack in all of God of War and let's see why. It's Medusa's gaze, but better in nearly every way. Essentially, it is the same as Medusa's gaze, just with some very nice side upgrades to stuff, MP management and allowing movement while in use. The beam is still the same, the flash is still the same, but the rest is different. Being able to move is very nice and healthy while beaming. Not that it was a huge problem that you couldn't move in God of War 1 while beaming, but still, you can't deny the evolution. As for the 360 Gorgon Rage attack that the Medusa's Gaze had, you know the one that took away all your magic? So just pressing L2 in circle finds Kratos throwing this small AoE petrifying orb that petrifies enemies. It is a nice and neat little attack. I don't really use it a lot when I have the beam and the flash, but it, it exists. Pressing L2 and holding circle and letting go after Kratos has charged the rage of the Gorgon is where everything around Kratos gets petrified but the cost is what saves it this time. This time around it's not clearing your entire magic gauge when you cast a thing, you can move around while charging it and you have iframes when you let go of the button. Oh my god. The biggest thing is that this only takes away 50 magic points from you. So essentially when your meter of the magic is maxed out you can cast the spell 4 times since you have 200 magic. One thing else that I haven't considered throughout this video is the cost to upgrade the magic attacks. Which, just to throw it out there, is very low for Uriley's head. This low cost to get it to the max? Count me in. Make absolutely sure to max it out the moment you get it. This thing trivializes encounters for you if you know how to use it. Uriley's head is the best magic attack in this series. I just really wanted to get that out of the way for the third or fourth time. Now, after Uriley's head, we get the fourth and final magic attack in God of War 2. Atlas Quake is the last magic attack that we get and it's a huge area damage. The game finds Kratos punching the ground followed by a stomp and everyone is sent flying around you. 
Now the thing that I have to instantly get out of the way is that this magic attack is affected by difficulty which is sad. That however does not make this magic attack flat out useless. Far from it. You can still use it for knockbacks on these enemies and by this point you know what knockbacks do, cause half collisions. Enemies are sent flying towards each other and that is some extra bit of damage to add on on top of the spell already doing its magic. But with all that said, it's still not better than the rest of the magic attacks in this list. Maxing it out makes Kratos add more boulders to the mix. I just thought of a joke. It adds more boulders to the mix. A solid magic attack, I just don't find myself using it a lot. But it still has its reasons to exist. It does push enemies away from you on top of the damage that it does. Still really really nice. And that concludes God of War 2's magic attacks. Moving on next to my favorite of all time, God of War 3. Let's see what this game did with the magic system. For starters, God of War 3 does not have a petrifying tool. The game sadly does not give us a tool like Medusa's gaze or Uriley's head from God of War 2 to petrify enemies, specifically a magic attack to do that, but we'll get to it in a bit. God of War 3 changed how the magic system is set. You're still equipping the spell you want to cast with the d-pad, but this time around the spells are actually connected to the weapon in hand. Army of Sparta happens when you have the Blades of Exile in hand. The Soul Summon, which I'll get in depth about, happens when you have the Claws of Hades in hand. The Nemean Roar happens when the Nemean Cestus is equipped. And finally, the Nemesis Rage with the Nemesis Whip. Now let's start with the first one. God of War 3 got weird and amazing with the magic system. For starters, it resembled God of War 1 in acquiring a magic attack this early into the game, except you have it the moment you get the Blades of Exile, right from the start of the Underworld. But this is all irrelevant, how is the magic attack itself? The Army of Sparta is a very nice damaging magic attack, an AoE just like Poseidon's Rage, again the resemblance to God of War 1. Now the thing is in God of War 3, there is no leveling up your magic attack in this game. The magic attack gets upgraded by you upgrading your weapon. So getting the blades to level 3 boosts up the army and your magic attack gets upgraded to level 2 by then. Your army starts raining down more arrows, naturally more damage. Taking the blades to the max level is where the army shines. Now you can mash circle just like Poseidon's Rage and you have one of the coolest looking magic attacks. It also does some very sweet damage and the range is amazing. Thing is, this does have a neat little trick just like God of War 1's Poseidon's Rage, except in here you're not mashing as fast as you can. A neat little trick with this magic attack is delaying your circle mashing. After casting the magic attack, just wait a little bit and then start mashing circle for even more arrows to rain down on your ops. But absolutely make sure to use this little trick, do not instantly start mashing circle, wait for the army to kinda spread out a little bit where it kinda builds a, a little castle and then start mashing for even more damage. Besides all that, pretty basic and awesome spell. The damage and the area of effect is really, really good. Next, we move on to the most experimental magic attack the series has ever gotten. The Claws of Hades introduced the soul summoning system into the game, and this is kinda... Where do I go with this? Essentially, when you get the Claws of Hades weapon, the game teaches you about selecting your soul summon from the menu. A whopping 9 souls that you can summon. Basically, 9 mini spells that you can cast. Before getting into any of them, let's get the awesome fact that you can cast these spells while attacking out of the way. That is just such a nice twist to this weapon. Now to get into each one of these soul summons and let's start with the ones that you have at level 1. You have 3 souls that you can summon at the start. The Cerberus Mongrel, Olympus Sentry, and Olympus Archer. The Cerberus Mongrel is my favorite out of these 3 and my second favorite out of all of them, but we'll get to that later. This guy is such a bro. The low magic points it takes to summon him, the neat damage that he does and the sweet knockback that he does. This guy is so good for ring outs, let alone the damage and he's available at level 1. This man is basically the replacement for the piercing shards in God of War 2 except in here he takes a little bit of magic out of you. Having a fast access to a knockback is no joke. On top of that he has nice damage and doesn't drain my magic gauge down by a lot. Next up we have the Olympus Sentry and these guys are the not so cool guys. They're like the nerds who sit in the front row of that one subject where the teacher decides to play Doctor Who for the students or something. On a real note, they deal the same damage as the Cerberus Mongrel. 
if they all connect their long attack strings. I don't really have a lot to talk about these guys, they just exist. The next soul summon is the Olympus Archer and this one is also a bro. It deals the same damage as the Cerberus Mongrel but it does different things. It obviously has better range but I still prefer the Cerberus for the knockback. That's it. And that's all for the level 1 souls. After that, when we take the class to level 3 is where we unlock 3 more soul summons and in here enters my favorite soul summon, the Gorgon Serpent. This is my favorite and possibly one of the most flawed ones in the list at the same time. Anyways, with it, we also get the Olympus Fiend and finally the Chimera. Let's start with the first one in this new set of souls. The Gorgon Serpent's issues can be wrote down as a script, alone. First and foremost, the biggest flaw, the cost. It costs 70 magic points. You heard me. 70. How much magic points do you have with a maxed out meter? 200. Meaning even if you max out your magic gauge, you can't cast more than 2. Which trust me, is not a problem. 2 is all you need to petrify nearly every enemy in the game, but this takes us to my next point which is, it's a flash, rather than a steady beam. And even though it's a flash, it does not behave like a normal flash of a gorgon head. In the prior two games, Gorgon's flash from your own hands does not add a buildup of petrification on the enemy. You can count it as a sniper bullet that instantly touches the enemies and enters them and petrifies them. God of War 3 Serpent Soul, however, acts like a normal Gorgon flash in the battlefield. The flash that comes out is not a real flash that Kratos could do in God of War 1 or 2. Rather, it's a normal flash as if a Gorgon did it to you or the enemies while in the middle of a battle. So it's not a real Gorgon flash, but it is a real Gorgon flash at the same time. It's just that... It I don't know how to touch on this. Why couldn't they simply give us the beam with it though? And why is it at level 3 of the claws? Petrification got pushed to the side in my favorite God of War game and it's kinda sad but it didn't completely get pushed aside. I'm still happy with it and the system is still good, it, it still works like God of War 1 and 2. But to bring it back to the beam argument, they could have given us a way to do the beam. How about maybe holding R2 for the beam, double pressing R2 for this flash, but maybe a better flash and fucking reduce the cost. This inferior inferior flash has no business draining all my magic like that. Let alone an inferior flash, no gorgon flash at all has the business to take away 17 magic points. God of War 2's gorgon rage took 50 magic. What is this flash taking 70? I know it's powerful and with the right use and the right sections, you can wreck but still. What is this flash doing in my garage taking away 17 magic points and why does it unlock at level 3? I really wish it was unlocked at level 1. Know that this is only a nitpick though. This is a very small nitpick. It's fine that it's unlocked at level 3 of the claws. I'm just saying. Like I usually get the claws to level 3 by the time I beat Hermes. Meaning I get my Gorgon's head by killing Hermes. Which is... It's very sweet though. I'm good with it. I trivialize a lot of spots. But only when I know I'm safe and I can manage my magic for the next section. Like in this Cyclops encounter right here for example. I know there's a chest that gives magic prior to this encounter. And another chest after the encounter. And some more sirens that I can grab for magic after this whole ordeal. Again, really good. But you gotta have one thing in mind. This is a flash. A normal enemy flash. Let alone a proper Gorgon head flash. Best ways to use it is when you know it lands safely. An enemy approaching you and he's idle? Do it. Enemies just spawning? Go for it. Enemies taunting? Please do it. The best way to absolutely ensure that you petrify an enemy is when they're taunting, running towards the outside of arenas provoked taunts, or staying far away from them. Notice how I provoke these satyrs to taunt first, then align myself with them to petrify both of them in one flash. I felt like really covering the petrification in this game since it's a very very iffy type of tool in this game. It's not really a proper petrification like a whole separate petrification tool, but different. Anyways, that's it for the Gorgon Serpent Soul Summon, it is still my favorite, just know that. Next up we also have the Olympus Fiend and it's nothing that special really. The damage is the same as the Cerberus but it doesn't knock back the enemies, it launches them, that's it. Just a setup tool but a very, I don't know, I don't know why I would ever use this. Chimera is a huge damaging magic attack. The damage is the most out of all the souls so far with this one. Pretty straightforward and the cost is good, it does not cost a lot of magic. I never use it though but still. 
pretty good. While we're at it, I should note that the level 1 souls that you had, you know, the first initial Cerberus Mongrel, Olympus Archer, and Olympus Sentry, these guys' damage does get a boost when you level up the claws, just to let you know. And even the level 2 souls get another boost when you max out the claws, and I felt like I have the need to throw this out there. Your souls do get upgraded when you upgrade the claws. Like, when it comes to damage, they get buffed. Yeah. Next, when we max out the claws, we get the last three soul summons. The Cyclops Berserker, Centaur General, and Siren Seductress. The Cyclops is definitely not the best. It does this attack that is somewhat bugged sometimes. This attack can sometimes vaporize enemies when cornering them, but that's it. Even in the corner, it can bug out and not kill the enemy sometimes, which is more the reason to never use him. It also costs some good chunk of magic, but that's about it. I never really use it. However, the one after this can be used very nicely. The Centaur General, aka a f***ing train. This man's range is awesome, the cost is also very good, and the damage is really nice as well. This fool vaporizes enemies by rushing towards them. A general being led by a better and wiser general? This is what you get. The nice twist to the centaur is that it has the ability to multi-hit. So it's not just a thing where it attacks multiple enemies in its way. If you trap an enemy in a corner and cast the spell, you can destroy that enemy. It brings a really nice twist and decision making to this soul summon. This guy already fucks with the one hit. Making it go up to 4 hits is just insane for this amazing cost. Like his magic cost is not that much. A very very nice soul summon. The centaur general is definitely one of my favorites. It's just so good. Now the last soul summon is very very underwhelming. Like you would think you can fucking spawn Hades out of nowhere and he does the cool claws underground attack for you at the cost of 70 MP because I would accept it fucking fine but no. You get a Siren Seductress, just a cyclonic wave that hits surrounding enemies. Nice cost, but really, really underwhelming when talking the last soul summon of the Claws of Hades. For real, imagine if we could summon Hades himself into this battlefield, to kinda rival Typhon's Bane with that huge tornado. A man can only dream. But overall, with the complaints that I have, the soul summon system is very innovative and I love it so much. To have a quick top 3 for you guys, it would be the Gorgon Serpent at number 1, Cerberus Mongrel at number 2, and the Centaur General at number 3. A really nice system. All of this is in the claws of Hades alone. It's so good. We now move on to the Nemean Roar, the Nemean Cestus magic attack, the Atlas Quake of this game. This one gets affected by difficulty settings, making it... Why would you ever use this? This gets nerfed on very hard. This magic attack is pretty straightforward. First, it's a single shockwave. You upgrade it to the max and unlock a second slam shockwave that Kratos does. You can cancel the second slam with a jump if you ever want to do that. As I said, pretty basic. I never use it unless I want to clear the shieldy boys ganging up on me, but that's really all. It scaling with difficulty means using other magic attacks would work much better than it. On very hard at least, since it's nerfed and it does only 75% damage. Just trust me, make sure to use all the other magic attacks that don't get affected with difficulty. This one does. Next and last magic attack would be the Nemesis Rage. Now the Nemesis Rage is basically the Kronos Rage from God of War 2, but it has the long range and all that. Again, these types of magic attacks are dependent on the game, if they allow you to go crazy nuts to the wall, that's even better since this is what basically these magic attacks are. The catch is that you cast them and then you have full access to Kratos movement. You don't just do one thing and then it just finishes. It's not like that. The Nemesis Rage is very good. It's honestly good for keeping crowds busy and good for damaging them and all. This one is a literal sniper shot however since look at the range. Good for hit count even though there is no special explosion in this game's rage mode like God of War 2. Imagine if we got access to an upgraded divine reckoning that we saw with the place of Athena whenever we reach 25 hits just like God of War 2. A man can only dream. The rage mode in this game sucks. But anyways that's about it for God of War 3's amazing magic attacks. What did the next game do? After after gaining the knowledge of the first God of War game's magic attacks and the innovation they did with God of War 2's Euryalus head and the Typhon Bane having multiple stuff to do, and later with God of War 3's explosive experiments with Soul Summon and all the good knowledge we all have about the magic attacks, what did God of War Ascension do? It ruined the magic system. 
I'm not about to sit down and ramble about how God of War Ascension tweaked the formula in some good ways and how it ruined the formula in a lot of ways. I still love this game so much. The magic system in here is again dependent on the weapon you have in hand, or rather the element on the blades. Watch how I'm gonna blaze through this magic system in the matter of seconds. The Fire of Ares has a best magic attack where Kratos slams the ground once and you press the QTE button for some reason to slam the ground again. This is the best magic attack in the game for the damage output that it does and for the knockback that it can cause for some sweet ring outs. The Ice of Poseidon is the second element you get but you don't get a magic attack with it. You have to upgrade the element to the max level to get the worst magic attack in the franchise. Kratos starts freezing everyone around him, Thamur's breath up on this bitch, except it does not have anything going for it. It does freeze the enemies fast but like, it's not like these enemies can shatter quickly now or anything. Petrification and freezing got butchered in this game. The statue HP is not low like the trilogy for some reason. Meaning these guys have a huge statue HP to the point where you rarely break their statue. I I'm pretty sure I've never broken a single frozen enemy in this game. So if you have all this, why would I ever dump this much magic points into this shitty magic attack? Why did they incorporate a petrification system into the game if the statue HPs are high as fuck and isn't like the original trilogy where your reward was an easy shatter kill to the enemies? I love ascension but stuff like this pisses me off so much. Then the next element we have the lightning of Zeus and well, why even use this? For hit count, I get it, but when you have the fire of Ares for the better damage and knockback that can help with the ring outs, I don't see a reason on why use this one. And finally, we have the soul of Hades where a bunch of hands get thrown around and that's literally it. it it's just so bad. Ascension is a good game that limits a lot of stuff, but when magic attacks are hidden behind maxing out an element on top of them being mainly useless other than the fire of Ares, just weird design choices, man very weird. A very good game in my opinion, but it fumbles the back heavy with some stuff, but hey, that's a video for another day. And that is it for covering the magic attacks and the mainline Santa Monica God of War games. Now, as I promised at the start of the video, let's do a very brief top four God of War games based on magic attacks. This list is going to be the games as a whole. At number four, we have God of War Ascension. Next up at number three, we have God of War Three. The awesome magic attacks of this game are so good and experimental with the soul summon. But to be honest, it still does not compete with the games that came before it by a little bit. It's almost there, almost, but not completely there. Like the Nemesis Rage is legit a very, very nice magic attack. The Army of Sparta is also a really, really nice AoE magic attack. The soul summoning system is very experimental and awesome. I really, really love it, but it just does not compete with what we have at the number two and number one spot. Next up at number two, we have, I don't know if I should say it though. I know, I know, but it's hard to say it honestly, but at number two we have God of War 1. This one is purely because God of War 2 came around and expanded everything this game built up. Granted, we never got a magic attack like the Army of Sparta in God of War 2 or any other God of War for that matter. But all the others are just a very nice expansion and change of pace from what we saw in God of War 2. When we're talking raw power and carnage, that definitely goes to God of War 1 with its Poseidon's Rage and Army of Hades. But overall, overall, if we're talking as a whole, God of War 2 is supreme. God of War 2 takes the number one spot for the very nice Typhon's Bane that has a variety of attacks, Kronos Rage for hit stunning and pure damage on multiple foes in a crowd, while the casting cost is not a lot, it's just such a good thing. And finally, Finally, the best magic attack in the franchise, Euryalus Head knocks everything out of the park, whether it's level 1 or maxed out. This is the best and is a very big reason why 2 takes it instead of 1. Not gonna talk a lot about Atlas Quake since it's pretty basic in what it does and is affected by difficulty, but it's still a solid magic attack for the area it covers and how it spreads enemies apart. God of War 2's magic attacks allow the most versatility with its tools. Typhon's Bane being a projectile weapon, a melee and long range setup tool, a carnage and destruction spell all at once is magnanimous. Euryalus head expanding what Minus's gaze built up and allowing movement, a small AoE orb to petrify, and a much more efficient and better costing Gorgon Rage is what makes God of War 2 truly the best when it comes to magic attacks. No competition. With that out of the way, we move on to the top 5 magic attacks in God of War. This is also going to be a simple list since I talk in detail about these magic attacks throughout the video, but there's another twist to it. This is going to be the magic attack in a bottle, as in a 
certain magic attack from a certain game separately. At number 5 we have Poseidon's Rage from God of War 1. The fact that you deal more and more damage with every press of the circle button gives it the edge over the army of Sparta from God of War 3. A solid and pretty basic magic attack that I really really love. Next at number 4 we have another from God of War 1 and it is the army of Hades. The pure carnage these demons cause and the nice attribute of the souls launching the enemies and bouncing them constantly is amazing. Awesome range, damage, area cover, effects and cost takes the number 4 spot. Next up at number 3 we have the soul summon of the claws of Hades from God of War 3. This is here in this spot higher than the army of Hades and Poseidon's Rage not because it's specifically better than them in any way, not in a million years, but for the pure creativity and things you can do with it. The different souls you can use, especially with the Gorgon if you set it up properly. Really nice and experimental magic system for a single weapon and I like it very much. Takes the number 3 spot. Coming up next at number 2 we of course have Medusa's Gaze from God of War 1. The amount of spots where you can use this whether it's for the money, efficiency or fun factor is just awesome. I've already explained how amazing this spell is so no need to touch on anything any further. Finally at number 1 we have Euryalus Head from God of War 2 and this is very easy to know why. This magic attack is a huge factor on why God of War 2 is the best game magic wise. It seals the fate of every other magic attack in the book. Euryalus Head only has one flaw and is that it doesn't tell you whether you can or can't petrify this enemy based on the magic you have left or the range that you have with the enemy. God of War 1's Medusa Gaze used to tell you that you can't petrify this enemy with the magic you have left or if the enemy was far enough. This one doesn't tell you. Again, very very nitpicky. Please remember that this is my most nitpicky I've ever been. This is a very small nitpick for the Euryalus head. And this concludes the ranking. This was another project that I had a lot of fun making. Make absolutely sure to like and share it with your friends as that helps me keeping the channel alive. Make sure to not eat that popcorn I told you to hold at the start of the video and I'm out here. It has been your Extreme Gamer Zesty. Peace!